In this screencast, we'll calculate the heat transfer rate due to free convection over a vertical plate. We'll look at two possible correlations for the Nusselt number, one that can be used for all ranges of the Rayleigh number, and the other that's appropriate only for laminar flow. Comparing those, we'll see if there's any significant difference between the two. Let's consider a vertical plate that is 0 0.6 meters high and has a width of 0 0.3 meters. And when we talk about the width, we mean this into the paper. It's at a temperature, so the surface temperature is going to be equal to 90 degrees, and it's surrounded by quiescent air at 25 degrees C. And what we want to do is find the heat transfer from the plate. So in order to do that, we're going to use Newton's law of cooling, so that the heat transfer coefficient times the cross-sectional area times here Ts minus T infinity. So in order to solve for that H, we're going to have to find the Nusselt number since that's equal to H times L divided by K, where K is the thermal conductivity of the fluid. The governing dimensionless parameter for free convection is known as the Rayleigh number, and we'll calculate that so that we can find out if it is laminar or turbulent flow. So first G, which is gravity, is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Beta, which is our thermal expansion coefficient for ideal gases, can be approximated as 1 divided by the film temperature. So the film temperature is equal to Ts plus T infinity divided by 2. However, we need to express it in terms of Kelvin, which is approximately 330 Kelvin. Beta is going to be equal to 3.0 times 10 to the minus third inverse Kelvin. In addition, we're going to have to look up the kinematic viscosities and all properties also looked up under the film temperature. So that kinematic viscosity is 20.92 times 10 to the minus six meters squared per second. We're going to look up alpha, which is the thermal diffusivity, and that's going to be equal to 29.9 times 10 to the minus sixth meters squared per second. And by the way, if you take a look at those two numbers and the Rayleigh number, you can see why we get Rayleigh numbers on the order of greater than 10 to the ninth. Our thermal conductivity of the fluid, K, is equal to 30 times 10 to the minus 3 watts per meter K. And finally, our Prandtl number is equal to 0 0.7. So when we calculate our Rayleigh number using the values above, we end up with a Rayleigh number of 6.66 times 10 to the 8th. Now the transition between laminar and turbulent flow is 1 times 10 to the 9th. So technically this is considered to be laminar flow. We have two possible correlations that we can use to determine the Nusselt number. The first one we'll use is a correlation that's specifically for laminar flow. And that one looks like this. So when we put in our values from above into our initial number correlation, we get that it equals 83. From there, we can calculate our H, which is this 83 times our thermal conductivity 
divided by our length scale. And for vertical plates, the length scale is the height of the plate. So in this case, 0 0.6 meters. And we find that our convective heat transfer coefficient is equal to 4.16. So when we calculate our heat transfer, that's equal to 4.16, and this is in watts per meter squared K. And we multiply it by that area, which is 0 0.6 times 0 0.3 meters times our Ts minus our T infinity, and we come out with a Q that's equal to about 48.6 watts. So now let's take a look at the more general correlation and see what kind of values we get for that. So when we put in our values, same values as above, we end up with a Nusselt number that's equal to 108. From there, we find our heat transfer coefficient and is equal to 5.4 watts per meter squared K. And then when we find our Q the exact same way, we end up with a heat transfer rate of 63.3 watts. And if you compare those values to the values that we got above, you can see that they are quite different. So determining convective heat transfer coefficients is very challenging because of the differences you can get depending on what correlation you use. So in this particular case, because the first one is considered more accurate due to its more limited range, only laminar flow, that would probably be the more suitable one to use.